Hello everyone, welcome back to Radiology Med Easy, your all-time favorite YouTube channel. Welcome back everyone. This is uh, how to approach series in radiology. So earlier I described about uh, how to approach chest x-rays. So I described about the basic features apart from pathology in chest x-rays. Now the second topic is how to approach abdominal x-rays. So I am going to discuss the normal anatomy, radiological anatomy in the abdominal x-rays and the key structures to look at before dealing with pathologies. So as in chest x-rays, the abdominal x-rays, the identification is important. First you have to look for the name of the patient here, age, gender, then the BHT number and X-ray number. Those are the fundamental things in any radiological film. CT, MRI, so in any film identification is important. Next thing is the side here, the mark right and the other thing is the projection. So projection is you have to think whether it's a supine abdominal radiograph or erect abdominal radiograph or lateral decubitus radiograph. So it depends on the patient's stability of uh, whether we can take supine one, the erect one or lateral decubitus one. In ICU setup we take lateral decubitus radiographs because we can't mobilize the patient to see the intraperitoneal layer. So here they have mentioned supine. So then in the supine radiograph uh, usually we include uh, D112 pubic symphysis. So that's the exposure factor D112 pubic symphysis level and laterally the right and lateral regions you need to include the soft tissues of the abdomen and the ribs and iliac crest the iliac bone should be included and uh, in erect abdominal it is ideal to include the diaphragms so we can see the gas under the diaphragm when there's bowel perforation or pneumoperitoneum next thing is tubes and lines so the common tubes you see in the abdominal x-ray uh, one is uh, you will see femoral lines in the abdominal radiograph like this femoral lines then the NG tube should be in the stomach you can't see the gas stomach capable gastric capable you can see it in the erect abdominal radiograph in the left hypochondriac region that's the NG the NG tube is the femoral line and also when there is biliary pathologies, biliary stains and uh, external biliary drainages and kidney nephrostomy tubes in the kidney areas and uh, and also after surgery there will be peritoneal drainage tubes and in children umbilical ve venous catheters and umbilical arterial catheters you can see in the umbilicus they will enter like this and goes upwards so those are a few lines and tubes you have to look for in a abdominal radiograph as in chest radiographs so next thing is then the, then we have to come to abdominal proper so in the abdominal proper this is the order usually i look at you don't need mnemonics to look at it's a simple radiograph so basically there are five things to look at free gas second on bowel then the solid organs and muscles fourth on soft tissues fifth one are bones so the free gas in the supine one there will be accumulation of air 
in the anterior part of the abdominal cavity usually around this region you get football signs this region and also the falciform ligament signs so medial umbilical ligament you can see median and medial umbilical ligaments when there is free gas and also ringler signs can be seen and in direct abdominal radiograph you will see gas under diaphragm continuous diaphragm signs those are the signs and the next thing is bowel bowel uh, you have to look from rectum rectal layer gas you have to look at uh, here and here it is obscured due to this bladder distended bladder and you have to then look for large bowel large bowel is located peripherally and this the this in this part you can see the sigmoid colon this is the descending the transverse colon this is the splenic flexure around this region hepatic flexure then the ascending colon and cecum the maximum diameter of large bowel is about uh, 6 cm cecum it's 9 cm and uh, there's a 3 6 9 rule small bowel maximum diameter 3 mm 3 cm then large bowel 6 cm for the appendix 6 mm and the cecum it's 9 cm so that's this 3 6 9 rule next thing you have to look for the and also another point in the large bowel there are incomplete rings so hostrations so this is the normal distribution and the size of the large bowel and then you have to look for the small bowel centrally there are valvular conventus and also the as i mentioned previously the size is or diameter is about 3 centimeters so it is usually distributed in the left upper quadrant and uh, in the center small bowel left upper quadrant you see the jejunal loops and in the center and right lower part you, you will see ileal loops so apart from that then you have to look for that appendix in this region the ileocecal region there will be appendicolites so it's a sign for acute appendicitis or gas in this region it's a sign for that also perforated appendix or appendicle abscess so you have to look for appendicolites so that's the bowel rectal gas is also important when there's bowel obstruction in heat this region rectal gas won't be there the next thing is liver liver this is the liver shadow or liver opacity you have to look for any calcifications in the liver region or then the new mobilia that means centrally distributed gas in the region of uh, liver if there's peripheral distributed gas there'll be that means portovenous gas and also you have to see the gb calculi the tip of the nine costal cartilage so that's the liver next thing is the kidneys you have to look for the kidneys so you can see the right kidney here and also the left kidney is slightly at high position like this the kidney you have to look for the calculi in the kidneys or nephrocalcinosis and also emphysematous pyelonephritis will be there and enlargement or masses in the region that will cause scoliosis of the spine and also you have to see the pathway of the ureters also down to the bladder Here you can see the bladder opacity and you can track the calculi in this pathway so that's the those are the kidneys the next thing that you have to look for is uh, if there's splenic you can see the splenic outline here slightly splenic calcification splenomegaly it enlarges into right iliac fossa region when there's enlargement of splenomegaly right iliac fossa so you have to see the splenic outline also sometimes you can see it and erect abdominal radiograph you have to see the gastric cab bubble yeah in the supine radiograph usually there is it is not included next thing in the pelvis you have to see the 
and you you train pathologies like uh, IUCDs whether they are IUCDs and also dermoid and calcified fibroid in a female you have to look for and in the male you have to look for the prostate problems then there will be blue one erosions the next thing is uh, muscles mainly you see the source muscle you can see the source shadow yeah it is important when we are dealing with psoas abscesses and also in the masses the psoas shadow will be obscured renal masses any abdominal masses large masses so psoas shadow is also important and next thing is soft tissues got to look for the soft tissues in the abdominal x-ray yeah you can see the soft tissue this region now this is the properitoneal fat layer yeah you can see it will be on both sides properitoneal fat layer so those are the few things about soft tissues you also have to see in this region in the in the hip region also there are soft tissues you can see soft tissue masses soft tissue swellings in these regions so uh, abdominal wall deposits in mets so we have to look for those things also the uh, finally you have to look for bones here you can see the lumbar spine and the sacrum lumbar spine you can see the sacrum you can see and pedicles see the spinous processes so this the l1 l2 l3 l4 l5 lumbar vertebra this d12 with the ribs and this is the intervertebral disc you have to see scoliosis or degenerative changes in the lumbar spine metastasis like uh, winking owl signs and also the transverse processes there will be mets and uh, scoliosis if there is a mass in the renal region and next thing you have to look for is sacrum whether their sacrum is intact in children or their sacral agenesis in children and the hip bones are also important and if you can see the femoral head it's important with the there are vascular necrosis and hip bones you have to see the mets in the hip bones so those are the things you have to look for in the abdominal x-ray so that concludes how to approach abdominal x-rays in the how to approach series in radiology so please subscribe our youtube channel then you'll get notifications of our new videos and also you can comment on our videos thank you everyone thanks for watching please like and subscribe for more videos like this